given that we've just seen an American election, I think I can quote another American president who could aptly describe the Prime Minister's economic policy. If it moves, mm -hmm. tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. If it stops moving, subsidize it. Right. Yep. Instead of doing none of the above, which would allow our entrepreneurs to actually build things on their own without sticking taxpayers with the bill. He wants to know our common sense plan? We will repeal the unconstitutional C-69. We will scrap the cap. We will axe the tax. Here, here. Why won't he call a carbon tax election so that we can bring home these jobs? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, when we stood up for Canadian jobs, Canadian oil producers, Canadian, uh, ta Canadian oil, steel and, uh, and aluminum workers, uh, the Conservative Party called that dumb, Mr. Speaker. We will always stand up and defend Canadian jobs, as we have in the past, as we create more opportunities for Canadians uh, right across the country and as we protect our national security. What the Americans will not understand is why the leader of the opposition, who desperately wants to become prime minister, refuses to get the necessary security clearances so he can keep his party safe. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I've already explained how a half a trillion of our dollars have left the country since this Prime Minister took office, Canadian, ta Canadian investment dollars paying American workers while our people can't afford food and homes. But don't take my work word on how uninvestable the country has become. Take the word of carbon tax carney. Right. The Prime Minister's lead economic advisor has just moved his $100 oh. billion dollar company to New York City. Oh. If the Prime Minister's own top economic advisor doesn't have faith in his economic plan, then why should anyone else? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what the leader of the Conservative Party hasn't explained is why he's treating national security like a dodgeball game. He ducks allegations of foreign interference in his own caucus. He dives uh, away from uh, a blind eye, dies as he turns a blind eye uh, towards investments uh, in, uh, in our communities uh, by foreign interferers. Uh, and he dodges the tools necessary to keep his party safe. Why won't he get the briefing, get the clearance, protect Canadians? You have to get the clearance before you get the briefing. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister likes to spread crackpot conspiracy theories instead of defending his economic record. But why, why wouldn't he? When you've doubled housing costs, you distract. When you've doubled food bank use, you divide. When you've doubled gun crime, you use fear to turn people's attention away. And when you've doubled the national debt, to a point that even your top economic advisor is fleeing the economic carnage you have created. You do anything possible to change the subject. If he can't defend his economic record, why not have a carbon tax election so that I can take it? Yeah. Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. He can't even defend the members of his own caucus because he refuses to get the necessary security clearance. And he likes to talk about crackpot, uh, crackpot conspiracy theories. Uh, it's not a crackpot conspiracy theory when his own members of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians uh, signed a report that was released publicly that talks about the fact that the Indian government interfered in the past Conservative leadership campaigns. Or is that perhaps why he refuses to get the security clearance necessary because he doesn't think he'd pass the security clearance because of Indian interference in his own uh, that was just a um, <laughs> what do you have next? 